Whether I'm sitting in meditation, which is something I do quite a bit of, especially these days, or settling into my chair, my specially custom designed <laughs> singhasana, to uh, share something about self realization, there's always one thing that's very upmost in my mind. Namaste. What is that? <laughs> Making sure that I'm not doing this to become enlightened. Either meditation or teaching or sharing or whatever. Or to be seen as enlightened by others. Because these are among the very few last barriers to actual enlightenment. See, just like some of the responses to the last video <laughs> were kind of very convoluted and confused because they still think, I'm not enlightened. So I have to become enlightened. So something has to happen. Something has to change for me to become enlightened. Somebody has to do something. <laughs> First of all, that's completely wrong. Because we already are Brahman in Turiya consciousness simply aware of the other three states of consciousness as our objects. And those states and their contents are complete illusion. <laughs> they don't really exist. They can't. Because they're based on duality and there is no duality in Brahman. So, we are already Brahman. We're already in Turiya. There's nothing you can do because you're already that. Tattvamasi. I am that, or you are that. So then, the whole idea is to drop all desire because there's nothing to desire. What's to desire? You're already it. Huh? So then you're going to ask, I, knew, I can see it coming a mile away, <laughs> how to drop that desire. Well, you can't. Because as soon as you start thinking, I have to drop the desire to become enlightened, you're thinking on the platform of duality that I am something different and individual, and then that there's this other thing called enlightenment. See, you, you put up the whole structure just to ask the question. The whole question rests on the assumptions, the ontological basis of duality. So, the only way to drop this desire is to forget about it. <laughs> forget about it, man. <laughs> and then somebody's going to ask, well, how do you do that? And the thing is, you have to become so satisfied, so happy, just being who you are and what you are, that you forget all about this mad desire for enlightenment. <laughs> well, how do you do that? <laughs> you know, I spend a lot of time on this channel talking about the goddess and the worship of the goddess and the names of the goddess and the mantras of the goddess. 
and so on and so forth for the last two or three years. Now, is that illusion? Well, technically, sort of. <laughs> but the goddess, Shakti, is Saguna Brahman. That means the absolute with qualities, Saguna. So does that mean that she is illusion? Well, one of her names is Maya, that which is not. But don't even think of all about all about that. That's it's not that's not going to get you anywhere except confused and chasing your tail. The thing you have to do, the thing you have to master, the thing you have to develop is to love her. Because if you're Brahman, then you're Shiva. And who is Shiva? He's the consort of Maya, the consort, the husband of Shakti. See, he loves her. She loves him. The eternal couple, the root of all duality. But duality doesn't exist, you say. Never mind. If you're not enlightened, then for you, duality does exist. And Shiva and Shakti are real. So how do you become Shiva? Love Shakti. Love her. She's beautiful. She's powerful, she's smart, and she's wild. <laughs> what is not to love? Huh? She's just the perfect thing, the perfect object of love. So love her. Just love her. And meditate on all her good qualities. And by doing puja and reciting her mantras and her names and so on, experience the result. And the result is so nice, you're going to forget all about any other desires. <laughs> I guarantee. Why do you think I sit here giggling and chortling and laughing to myself? Huh? I'm not laughing at you. It's not about you at all. This whole thing is not about you. <laughs> it's about her. And she is the source of happiness for everybody up to and including Shiva himself. So, to overcome this desire of, I want to become enlightened, huh? or I want to drop desires, <laughs> <laughs> or I want to attain samadhi, or all of that kind of stuff. Don't try to stop those desires. That will just make them stronger. Instead, do shakti bhakti. Uh, love the goddess, and she will love you. And you'll be so satisfied. You'll be so happy. You'll be so ecstatic. Yeah? You'll forget about everything. You'll even forget about your big old ego. <laughs> just the whole thing will just fade away and you'll be, find yourself in a different reality. Huh? And in that reality, there is no want, there is no need, there is no desire because you're so fulfilled. Huh? You're so fulfilled being yourself that slowly, slowly, without even noticing, you become the self. And she'll reveal this to you gradually in a series of realizations, a well-known series called The Four Paths. And this was taught by the Buddha. You can also look up our earlier discussions on this subject. And just do your sadhana. That's all you really need to be concerned about. Get your mantra, get your uh, atma bija, huh? and chant your mantra, and worship her. Do little arti ceremonies, offer your food, offer flowers, or whatever you have available. 
Uh, she'll accept it, even if it's done imperfectly, even if it's done, you know, irregularly, even if you're not following all the rules. <laughs> Because love doesn't follow any rules. Love is spontaneous and is beyond any kind of rules and regulations. There's no explanation. There's no cause for it. You know, it just happens. When you are in the association of the beloved, see? And actually, her intention is to grant us that enlightenment because she craves union with Shiva, see? And so she'll make it happen. Uh, she has the power to grant it, and she will grant it. Just, you know, hang out with her, get to know her, and get to love her, because she is really the most lovable being in existence. Aung Tatsa. Aum Shakti Aum.